Hi there, in today's video, I thought I would tell you a little bit about my very first experience voting in Denmark as a foreigner. Stay tuned. Come along as my Danish husband and our two sons show this American what it means to live a life in Denmark, my new Danish life. Hi there and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kelly and I'm an American who lives in Denmark. Now I've lived in Denmark for over five years and I have never been able to vote in Denmark until this year. And it's actually something that I didn't know I had the option of doing. It's a really surprising yet wonderful thing that I'm really glad and appreciative that I had the opportunity to do. And I wanna tell you a little bit about that uh, maybe you are a Dane and you're thinking, wait a minute, I didn't know foreigners could vote in Denmark. Or maybe you are a foreigner and you're thinking, well, how do I get a vote? What do I get a vote for? Or maybe you're just curious. Maybe you're just curious about voting in general and want to know. Well, I'm going to let you know what my experience was like. And I'm let me tell you, I did not have a lot of time from when I was told I could vote until the time when I actually voted. So uh, I had to do a lot of scrambling to get myself prepared to do voting, but uh, luckily there wasn't that much in the way. You know, when we think about voting in the US, there's a lot of different people you have to vote for because there's a lot of different jobs in Denmark. In this election, that wasn't the case, but I will let you know more about that here coming up. If you have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel, clicking on the red button. Give this video a like, also a share if you know other people who are interested in this topic. And don't forget to leave me a comment down below. This video is also sponsored by Anna Luisa. Anna Luisa has sent me some nice Christmas presents. Again, the Anna Luisa package is all of their jewelry in these cute little bags. And this first one, is something that I got for my sister-in-law. These come in a lot of different colors, but my sister-in-law is really into yellow, so I know that she's absolutely gonna love these. These earrings actually are Anna Luisa. I didn't get them for Christmas. Um, my necklace is also Anna Luisa. These are ones that I wear all the time. I absolutely love these, by the way. I love this color. This is like a burnt orange. I didn't even know about this because this is the very first ring that I am actually getting. And this one is going to my niece. And you can see there, it's got a little bit of bling there in the front. And I'm gonna wear this one in the video because I don't think this one is too weird to wear somebody's <laughs> ring during the video. That is so much fun. You could like flip it around and wear it each way. So I'm gonna probably be talking a lot with my hands so I could show you off that. But the last piece is something that I think is so exciting. This is a gift set is going to be going to someone special. I can't tell you exactly who this person is because it's a surprise. Um, this person actually doesn't know they're getting it. Everybody else, I they already know about the jewelry that they're getting, but this person doesn't, so. But if you follow me on Instagram, you might find out um, on there. So make sure that you're following me along on Instagram, my new Danish life. It's the season for giving. So you know what? Anna Louise is having sales all the time. They have fantastic jewelry. I always am finding something that will go with a different outfit. I love changing my jewelry. So it kind of, you know, em emphasizes what I have on. So if you're looking for a gift um, for someone for a birthday or for the holidays, make sure that you are checking my link in the description below so you can get to their sales that are going on right now. And thank you to Anna Luisa for making this Christmas very special. Okay, let's get started with this video. Now, I have to say that I did a little bit of research when it came to knowing if this was legit, right? I get this letter in the mail that says, you're able to vote. And it's not even a letter that I got. I got my voter's card in the mail about a week before voting. And I thought to myself, is this real? Is this a real voting card? Why am I getting one? And after a little bit of research, I found out why. I got to vote in the fall, November election of 2021. This is something that happens every four years. So 
I was not allowed to vote before when I first moved here because I hadn't lived here long enough. So what are the requirements for someone who gets to vote in the November election that happens in 2021 and every four years after that? Well, you have to be 18 years old. So you could be a Danish person and be an 18 year old and get to vote. But if you're a foreigner, you have to be someone who is either Norwegian, Icelandic, a member of a European Union state, so another European Union country, or somebody like me who is not from the European Union, but I have lived in Denmark for at least four years. So there are a couple of requirements there. So if you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, why didn't I get a vote? I'm a foreigner, but I've only lived in Denmark for three years. Okay, well, then that's probably the reason. Um, then the next time that they have a vote in four years, you'll be eligible. Now, when in November is this exactly? Well, it's actually the third Tuesday of November every four years. So just in case, maybe you're anticipating the next one, which would be in 2025. And you're saying, okay, well, it's November 1st. I don't have my voter's card. But something to look into. You could also contact them at um, the, the citizen service and if you are curious if you are going to be getting your voter's card. Now, if you're taking notes about all of this because you want the information for yourself, you can actually look down in the description below and find a link to a blog post that I've already written about this. So it's already written out for you. All you have to do is click on it and you have all the information typed up for you if that is something that you're also interested in. Maybe you're not having an easy job completely understanding everything that I say and you'd also like to read it. That blog post is right there and ready for you. So be sure to check that out. Okay, so once I got my voter's card and I realized that I was actually eligible to vote, I read my voter's card because right there on it, it tells me where I need to go to vote. It also tells me which line to stand in because I think there was like four or five lines of where you can go and talk to somebody and they'll write off your name kind of thing and they give you a ballot and you can go in and vote. And it was very organized. So I didn't really have to worry about anything. The only thing that I really wanted to do, obviously, was prepare myself for what it was I was voting. You know, it's kind of crazy because I thought, okay, great, what can I vote for? You know, it's not a national election. I don't get to choose who runs the country, but I get to choose who is the local representative. So it's the local and the regional elections that I was able to vote for. So in reality, I got to vote for two people, a local and a regional. So in Denmark, it's separated between like five or six regions, right? I live in the middle of the peninsula. So I live in Midtjylland or mid middle cent central Denmark. So that's the area that I got to choose for the person that I wanted to represent the area. In the regional election, this person is going to be in charge of hospitals, healthcare issues, transportation, environmental issues. So when I'm thinking about <coughs> that person, that region, that very big section of Denmark, these are the areas that they're gonna be in control of. And I took that into consideration when I was choosing which person from which political party, you know? I mean, to me, it's all based off of what you feel is the right choice. But then I also live in Vibor Comuna, which is the municipality of Vibor. So it's kind of like a county. That's what we would think of it in the United States. And I would get to choose who is kind of in charge of, of the local area. <coughs> But on the local side, that's a little bit more close to home because that's the person who might actually uh, make some sort of impact on the school my kids go to or the roads that I drive down. Urban development, cultural events, nursing homes, all of this stuff that can happen in my own town or in my own comuna. So like something that's very close, like 25, 30 minutes away. So these are people who are going to have a little bit more impact on how I live my day, daily day life kind of thing. 
You know, as I walk through town when it is, we're getting ready for an election, there are signs everywhere. In the US, we put signs in our yards if you want to, but in Denmark, they're really just gonna be on like light poles. We would do that in the US too. And I see the person's face, their name, and then maybe some type of symbol that tells me what political party they're a, a, a member of. And I don't know the difference between all the pol political parties. Well, in Denmark, there are over 10 political parties. So that is where I had to do my investigation first because I thought, okay, if I'm not quite sure about the person, I should be focused on picking the correct political party. As I mentioned, they have over 10 uh, political parties in Denmark. I'm gonna read them to you. I have them written down. There's the Social Democratic Party, the Liberal Party, the Danish People's Party, the Socialist People's Party, the Social Liberal Party, the Red Green Alliance, the Conservative Party, the New Right, the Liberal Alliance, the Liberal Independent Greens, the Alternative, and the Christian Democrats. <laughs> that is a lot to, to think of right there. I mean, as far as what I know, like the country right now it is run by the Social Democratic Party. So that is when they tends to get a lot of votes. Also, I know that in our area, the Liberal Party, which is called Venstra or V, um, that is also another really popular uh, political party in our area, as well as the Conservative Party, which is C. Um, it's so interesting how they're all, they all have their own name and they all have their own abbreviation and a lot of them are different letters. And that can be kind of confusing for someone who is just starting out learning about all of this. And then also someone who has a very short window before voting time comes. Um, so in my blog post that I have, I have links to every single political party. Um, if not, I think most of these links are in English, so you should be able to read about them. Um, and what I did was I looked at kind of like the main page because you see some words that are repeated often on their website. You know, some political parties are really for social, you know, like, you know, schools and daycares and, and things like that. Some political parties are, are a lot that have to do with health. Like health is the most important thing. So hospitals and stuff like that. And so for me, I was looking at these web pages and thinking, okay, well, what words are repeated a lot? And that kind of gave me an idea of where this political party's stance was mostly. And it was kind of confusing in a way because I kind of agreed with a lot of them. You know, I thought, all right, well, this one sounds pretty good. And then I read another one and I thought, oh, well, that one sounds kind of good too, you know? And there were some political parties right away. I was thinking, no, 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 no. I've always been a little bit more on the conservative side. In the US, I consider myself a very conservative liberal. <laughs> because I think that there is, you know, it's not just I'm on this side or I'm this side. I think there's a line, right? And where are you on that line? I think that it's it's very much more like that um, in the way that I think of it instead of I'm separated. You know, I'm in one group and that doesn't touch another. I think there are a lot of things that can kind of cross over. And when you have so many political parties, I think that there are a lot of shared values. And so maybe as I have more experience with them, I will, I will tend to gravitate towards one group more than the other. But there was also um, a website that I went to. They have these candidate tests. So you can go on and they ask you a couple of different questions and I had the links to these in my blog post so you have to check that out. Um, you click on it and you take this little quiz and after the quiz is over, they will tell you which person is probably the best person in your area to vote for, whether it's your regional person or your local person. And you know, I took this with a grain of salt, which means that I took it as a suggestion, but I didn't look at it as this is exactly what I have to do. You know, it kind of helped me also narrow down, you know, because 
Some of them actually said the same thing because there's more than one test. And then there were others that kind of popped up like, oh, I, I hadn't heard about this person or this political party. What's that all about? Let me read a little bit more about that. So when I would take those tests and they gave me an idea of, of which, which person to go with on both sides, you know, maybe they gave me like three choices or something. I was definitely going to be reading about those political parties to make sure that I thought that those political parties were going to be focusing on these specific areas. Um, yeah. Okay, so flash forward to voting day. I was so excited. The polls opened at eight o'clock and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go right away because I don't want to have any issues. They were open from eight in the morning to eight o'clock at night. Um, I knew I would have been able to go at some point in time and I thought, well, let's just get it in and get it over with. And then I don't have to think about it or worry about like missing it or forgetting it or whatever. And so my husband and I went together. Um, it was really kind of a fun thing to be able to do together because he couldn't vote in the USA. Foreigners aren't allowed to vote. That's like the difference between a foreigner and an American. That's something that we've never done before together. And so it was uh, kind of a really interesting experience to be able to do that with my husband. So I took my voter's card, went um, to the, the place in our town where I was scheduled to cast my vote. Uh, again, on the card, it actually told me which line I was going to go into. Um, and so when I walked in, it said like line one, line two, you know, all the way to like line five or something. And so I went into my line and I gave her my voter card. She asked me for my birthday and I told her my birthday and she kept the voter's card because it's just like, you know, a piece of paper or whatever. But I can imagine that if you have lost your voter's card, you can also take in um, like your driver's license, a form of ID. Um, you could do it that way instead. So I've heard, I haven't tried it, but um, once I did that, she gave me two very long pieces of paper. One was yellow and one was white. And I only could make one check on each of those papers. So I took my two pieces of paper and I went into this really small voting booth and they already had a pen in there so I didn't have to worry about it. And it had a sign in there also that explained how the box should be filled out and that there should only be one filled out on each paper, which I thought actually was really crazy because they, the paper was so much longer than a normal piece of paper. It was like three or four pieces of paper long and you only could, you could only check off one box. It was just crazy. I've never seen anything like that. Um, and then when I was done doing my checks inside this little booth, I folded the papers and then I walked outside of the voting booth and there was like this big container with a hole in it. And there was a guy standing there making sure that I was putting papers in the right container. And then I put the white one where I should and the yellow one where I should. And then that was it, I was all done. It was a really exciting experience. And when the polls closed at eight, you would see that on TV, they had a lot of new news coverage from all over Denmark and they were, you know, starting to tally up the, the, the votes and, you know, they would call in with, oh, you know, this Kamuna has so many of their votes in and these are the front runners. And, you know, it's something that, that happens with every election. We have it in the U.S. too. It's always really exciting to kind of see who was going to win. For me, it was still kind of a whirlwind. I, you know, I felt like I was prepared, but when you are, are in that situation with those papers and you have to fill them out and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm trying to remember which paper goes to what and what did I just vote for? And um, it, it really felt like a blur. But I know now to be a little bit more prepared for the next session, the next um, election, which is in four years. So I'm pretty excited to be able to um, look forward to that and learn a little bit more about these different political parties. What about you? Are you someone who is interested in voting? Have you voted in another country before? Let me know about your experience in the comments. When I turned 18 in the United States, I was really excited to, to vote for the first time. I always loved voting. I always loved um, going to the polls and, um, 
and casting my vote, I always have thought it's been very important. I know that women have not always been able to vote um, uh, for what it is that, that they uh, want to happen in their, their surrounding areas. And so I think it's very important that because I'm allowed to vote that I, I exercise that right. Um, as an American, but also as a foreigner living in Denmark, I feel extremely privileged. I know some people are thinking, oh, it's not that exciting. Why are you talking so much about it? And it's like, to me, it's really exciting because I don't feel very important sometimes as a foreigner. There's so many people, situations, whatever, that remind you that you aren't someone who belongs here, that this is not your home. And it makes me feel bad sometimes. And I, I try to, to keep putting my, my best foot forward and, and not think about these things. But when I have an opportunity like this that shows me as an equal to my peers, it, it really, um, it, it's really appreciated. So I am going to use my voice when I can and I'm excited about it. It might not be exciting to other people, but it is exciting to me. But I really, um, appreciate to hear your comments so make sure that you're leaving them down below thank you again to anna louisa for all of the beautiful gift set gifts that i'm going to be giving out to my family also for always making me look a little shiny during my videos i really appreciate it don't forget to check my link below in my description to get your own jewelry at anna louisa at a really good price thanks for coming along on this video and as always, take care.